Okay guys, this is it. No more loud and cringy intros. Part 6 of all the legendary weapons in Borderlands 3. I'm finally done with these long videos for now. I can get my life back and start working on some other videos. And I want to thank everyone who subscribed during the past couple of days and supported me throughout all this. I know it's not much for YouTube standards, but I still can't believe that there are over 200 people subscribing to my channel and want to watch my videos. Thank everyone who's giving me a chance. Now, what I wanted to ask you to do is, for everyone who has ever watched one of these videos before and found it at least a little informative or just simply want to help a small youtuber out please leave a like on this video right now it would mean so much to me and help me out a lot if you want to see more videos for me in the future i always make sure to put the extra work in for you guys to make my videos as informative as they can possibly be so if you leave a sub i promise i'll try my best to not disappoint you guys as always you can find the complete list in the description and timestamps for every legendary in each video in the comment section so without further ado let's jump right into the the last part of this series with the last of 121 legendary weapons I have collected. Starting off today with a shotgun that has been a true veteran in the Borderlands franchise and that is Sledge's shotgun. It has been in every single Borderlands game before except Tales from the Borderlands and unlike its predecessors this one cannot come with any element. And it is only right that this legendary Jacob's shotgun drops from the hardest NPC in the game. I'm not talking about Moxie, not Ellie, but Hot car right here in the devil's razor on pandora he's one of zero's bounty targets and therefore will spawn every single time he's pretty easy to reach since he is close to the fast travel station just follow the path you see in the video and kill the dude with the best haircut you will ever see and a chance to get sledge's shotgun it was said back in the original borderlands game that the red text the legend lives was probably a reference to the american soul and r&b singer percy sledge but now the red text says the legend still lives and could also be referred to the shotgun itself. Now my version is the roundup sledge's shotgun that shoots in two shot bursts but there's also a super prefix that makes it shoot in three shot bursts. The shotgun has a very big magazine size but that and the burst firing mode is probably the only thing special and worth mentioning about it. I didn't really enjoy using this weapon due to its high recoil and it seems to be a lot more capable for dealing damage when aiming down sights which was sometimes even less enjoyable. <laughs> Now, even though Dahl came up with an interesting concept for the Sleeping Giant, I think they should have put some more damage on this SMG on top. It is a reference to the Sleeping Giant song by Mastodon and the red text Infinite Path Carved with Unrivaled Skill are some of the lyrics from there. It can be fun getting some random weapon buffs after reloading it, with the most notable being the fire rate and reload speed increase, but like I said, this gun lags in damage and when you are unlucky and get the Searing Sleeping Giant version of it like I did, you will sometimes tear through your magazine so fast you think you only fired one round. It switches between a fully automatic version and a four shot burst but the bursts have a little bit of downtime in between that you are better off using the full auto mode. In my opinion it looks pretty cool though and might be a lot more fun early game when it drops from any lootable source with any element but you are most likely to try it out then anyway. One of the legendary weapons we have seen before the game even released was this crazy looking smart gun XXL. This is a TDO SMG that, as the name suggests, can only drop from the smartest boss enemy of them all, Gigamind. Therefore you have to head over to his arena in the Meridian Metropolex right here on Promethea and respawn at the safe station in front of it every time you killed him and he didn't drop it. In classic TDO fashion, this SMG is pretty much special only for his reload where it will spawn up to 6 mini spider like weapons with Gigamind's brain on top of it that will seek out enemies and shoot at them with increased elemental and splash damage from any element that it comes with. If they hit an enemy before reaching the ground upon reloading though, they will explode immediately on impact and the same happens to one of the six if you choose to throw a seven. The damage, travel speed and fire rate of the projectiles is pretty underwhelming but still a must have to at least see these spider weapons for yourself just one time. Oh and now I almost forgot that the red has been busy getting brain like Krang is a reference to the song Backpackers by Childish Gambino, just to let you know. <laughs> Oh, 
Only a few more dial weapons left after the star helix and this one is an assault rifle that is just like the red tags. The stars are better off without us. A reference to the sci-fi series The Expanse by James S. A. Corey. I will just read the Borderlands wiki entry for this one because I didn't quite understand it at first and it would feel wrong to act like I did. So it fires two additional projectiles that follow the main projectile in a horizontal oscillating path. And for those of you who were like me and had no idea what oscillating meant, these two projectiles will swing back and forth from left to right and will meet the central projectile at certain distances. But for the weapon they seem to do it so often that you can't really track them and it felt kind of distracting to see this long right horizontal line on your screen and I couldn't bring the weapon to deal decent damage but I might just suck with it. The weapon can drop from any loot resource in the game without any elements and I don't know but I didn't quite like it. The Mali 1 Storm sniper rifle is basically the shock version of the Firestorm that is also manufactured by Mali 1. This one is returning from Borderlands 2 though, where it used to be a pearlescent rarity weapon and now it is legendary. The red text, tot tot, it looks like rain, is a quote from Winnie Pooh and the Honey Tree. And in the case of the storm, the rain means four shock ops around the impact of the projectile that will fly up in the air and electrocute anything that comes close to it. This is a great weapon to get rid of larger shields, for example, from boss enemies, has the default skin Thunderhead, like the Brainstormer so you don't need to buy it from Earl, and it looks awesome to let the shock ops deal with your enemies. But trying to get it depends on how lucky you are because it can drop from any lootable source in the game. For the next Mali 1 pistol, you don't have to consume a fire flower for it to shoot, but unfortunately it also doesn't one shot your enemies and is honestly not that good of a weapon. The super ball is with its red text, flower power and the mechanics of this fire only weapon, an obvious reference to the Super Mario series from Nintendo. Because it shoots bouncing fireballs with every shot that make a similar sound to the one from Super Mario. You can get it from any lootable source in the game and even though it is not a good weapon, still worth the experience playing as our favorite with Plumber in Borderlands 3. <laughs> Okay, so for the next spot, I'll just put three in one little video because honestly, they all seem kind of like the same Jacob shotgun with just slightly variations in their names and their mechanics. These three include the TK Shockwave, the TK's Wave, and the tidal wave Whereas TK's wave and shockwave both say ride the wave dude in the red text, the tidal wave says flee the wave dude instead. They all refer to TK Baha and his shotgun from the original Borderlands game and the tidal wave was also featured in Borderlands 2 already. They all shoot six projectiles that move like a wave in a horizontal line that when hit an object will bounce off from it. The difference from the tidal wave and the shockwave to the normal wave is that the shockwave only comes in shock element obviously and the tidal wave is double barreled and shoots two lines to six projectiles each. You can significantly decrease the spread of the projectiles by aiming down sides, but the weapon in my opinion still sucks. Not worth getting and not satisfying to use, especially with those slower and almost unpredictable projectiles. They can all drop from any lootable source in the game, so you might as well just try it out for yourself when they drop for you, but I didn't like them. The very last legendary TDO weapon in Borderlands 3 so far is this SMG with the name 10 gallon. And the only thing I know with that name is a 10 gallon head and I don't know what this has to do with the weapon in this game. Maybe because it will always hover above you and follow you wherever you go. It really kinda acts like your best friend as the red text already suggests. Which could be a reference to the best friend song from Harry Nielsen. What I mean by hovering above you is that when you reload this weapon once it will fly above you and follows you around and shoots at enemies 
case. But when its magazine is empty, you have to reload your weapon so that the magazine can fly into the weapon hovering above you and reload it. It is a pretty fun concept and I really felt kinda connected to the weapon. Too bad the damage on this thing isn't really good. It can drop from any lootable source in the game with any elements so when you don't have any friends to play with, go get yourself one with this weapon. <laughs> The Thunderball Fist used to drop from Zane's brother in Borderlands 2 but is now a world drop in Borderlands 3 that can still only come with the shock element and is kinda like a pistol version of the Storm Sniper Rifle. This Mali 1 pistol is great for dealing with enemy shields and the name and the red text I can have such a thing is a reference to the Chinese Superman movie The Super Inframan. When you hit an enemy with it the projectile will create an orb that will fly up in the air before coming down quickly and dealing massive AOE elemental splash damage. Like I said great weapon for dealing with shields and all around fun to use. <laughs> Have you ever wondered what a good Mali 1 orb shotgun would look like? Well, look no further than the Trevenator. Not only is the weapon pretty good itself, but it has yet another great story behind it. A Borderlands fan by the name Trevor Eastman, who is diagnosed with cancer, was, I believe, invited to the Gearbox Studios to play the game early because he said he didn't know if he would make it long enough until the release of Borderlands 3 and they even named the gun after him. This is a somewhat similar story to the one with Michael Marmorell and yet another class act from Gearbox and I love that they did it. Now back to the weapon. This is a shotgun that can drop from any lootable source in the game and will always come with two of all the elements that you can switch between. When you shoot it, it will fire six elemental orbs in a burst with no charge up time at all and does amazing damage. Maybe the best for any Mali 1 shotgun in the game and definitely better than whatever the lob is. Unfortunately, Torque's last weapon on this list might be the worst of them all, which is the Tri-Bolt. This is an assault rifle that has its name because it has three bolts that shoot mini rockets in a burst and because of a quote from Yoda in Star Wars where he says do or do not, there is no try, which can also be found slightly different in the red text, do or do not bolt. The three mini rockets will always stick onto an enemy first for a very short time before exploding and I don't know if I'm using it wrong again or if there's anything I miss but man and do they do low damage. I believe it will always do fire damage to your enemies as well, regardless of whether you have a fire version or elementless version of it. And it can drop from any lootable source again and will probably drop just as often from the player who just picked it up. Oh, oh, arise, my soul. <laughs> One of the few weapons that I couldn't really figure out for its mechanics was the Tsunami. This is a Mali 1 SMG that will only have a chance to drop from the Katagawa ball on Skyworld 27. It is a long way to get there but since it is a boss enemy you don't have to worry because there is a safe station right in front of the arena that you will spawn at after every save and quit if he doesn't drop it for you. When it does drop for you it will always show up as an elementless version with the red text you can't explain that which is different to the red text from the version of the Tsunami in the original Borderlands. It had the same red text as the tidal wave in Borderlands 3 which is flee the wave and just a fun little side note here. But let me try to explain anyway. When you shoot this weapon its main projectile has no element and sometimes there will be I believe five additional projectiles coming with it in either corrosive or shock that seem to come pretty randomly. But just watch the gameplay and you will understand what I mean. To sum it up it is a good weapon maybe even a little underrated. Try farming the ball yourself and give it a shot at least. I should remind myself every time I say something that I'm an idiot, which would have prevented me from saying that Tribal is the last torque weapon on this list because there's still the Tunguska. This rocket launcher returns as a legendary from Borderlands 2 where it used to be a pearlescent weapon and has its name from the big mysterious explosion in 1909 that was given the name Tunguska event. The red text Crack the Sky is fitting for the weapon but also the second reference to Mastodon and the album of the same name in 2009. It won't come with any 
any element when it drops from any lootable source, but it will come with two rockets per shot that will either stick onto an enemy when hitting directly or fly up in the air after impact and explode for massive damage that just about one shots every enemy hit by it in true Vault Hunter mode. Do I have to say more? <laughs> The Unending Magnificent is a Vlad of Pistol that seems to have unending features as well. I have seen two versions myself and two more online, whereas mine has a fire and shock element at the same time and one that just has corrosive. The other two I've seen on YouTube had fire only or no element at all and the difference between mine and the one others have is that mine have a taser as a secondary fire mode and theirs have a double barrel fire mode with double the fire rate which looks absolutely insane. Unfortunately I only have the taser with which seems to be unbelievably weak and what this weapon also has is increased fire rate, probably the biggest magazine in the game and the longest reload time for any non-rocket launcher weapons with very low damage. The double barrel attachment though seems to have the highest fire rate in the game with an insane recoil as well, so definitely be on the lookout for those. They can drop from any lootable source in the game and I keep forgetting the red text, which is something in Russian that translates roughly to going somewhere for a day, take bread for a week and a friend of mine is from the Ukraine and his mother said it's just a saying that most likely refers to the large bullet count in the magazine of this weapon. <laughs> I believe that it is finally time to forgive Gearbox for how bad the Unforgiven was in Borderlands 2. <laughs> This Jacob's Revolver is the last returning weapon from Borderlands 2, is now a legendary weapon instead of a pearlescent and might just be the most fun skill cannon we have in this game, at least it is for me. It has an insane critical hit damage boost but also comes with a super slow fire rate that makes it all the more rewarding to hit crits with this thing. The red text, it's a hell of a thing, is a reference to the movie Unforgiven from 1992, directed by and starring Clint Eastwood. It will never come with any element but can drop from any lootable source in the game. If you want to test your skill skills with aim or have some fun with flex fade away, definitely give it a try. Don't you enjoy my sorcerers? And yet I The Vanquisher would be a really cool weapon if we had the ability to slide as much as you are able to in the game Vanquish from where the name is coming. Because when you slide with this Star SMG in your hands in Borderlands 3, you do it 20% faster and your fire rate is doubled. But since you can't slide for that long, this special ability sounds cooler on paper than it is in game. The red text reference is pretty cool though, which is a quote from the movie Fight Club that makes me see a penguin that says slide every time I'm using this weapon now. Thanks Gearbox. Not much more to say about this weapon other than it drops so many lootable swords in the game and can come with any element. My middle name. Then philosophy. Let's have a chat, shall we? The wagon wheel is not like other Jacob's revolvers on this list and even if it might look fun to have your bullets split into multiple other bullets on a hit and even more bullets on a critical hit, they don't target other enemies nearby and will instead fly in a random direction where they bounce off objects before they disappear which you can decide for yourself if you like this better or not. The name and the red text keep them doggies rolling might just refer to two different country songs but I'm not sure about that. The weapon shoots four bullets before you have to reload that you can fire off as fast as you can pull the trigger but the damage is not exceptional like it is on some other Jacobs revolvers. It can drop from any lootable source in the game without any elements and I don't know I wouldn't say I can really recommend it. The bloodshed, the chaos. <laughs> Coming up next is the last star weapon on this list and has the name Warlord, which is like the red text my gun sings for your blood, a reference to the Warlord of Blood enemy in Diablo. It is possible to get this weapon from any lootable source in the game with any element. It has a 30% chance to not consume ammo, what is always a nice feature to have especially while firing full auto and I really like this weapon but that's pretty much it about it. A simple design for a legendary but still good. That wish granted.
I swear it is not that I just want to finish this thing ASAP, but this is another rep and I don't have much to say about. The Wrestler Gun is a decent weapon that can come like most other Mali 1 weapons with two of all elements you can switch between and what's good for this SMG is that it has no charge up time and an increased splash damage radius for its projectiles. The projectiles move relatively slow, again like other Mali 1 weapons, Ugh. and that is what holds me back from liking it more. But still it's a decent weapon to have. If you want to get this thing you have to finish a side mission that you can get from Ava on Sanctuary with the name Invasion of Privacy where you have to kill private beans at the end of the mission right here on Athena's. The drop rate seems to be pretty high for this one since me and my friends all got it multiple times from killing him just a few times but I don't think it is guaranteed. The red text on it is a quote from a movie in the movie Home Alone 2 and says I believe you but my Tommy gun don't and if you don't love Home Alone something went horribly wrong in your childhood. The last two weapons on this list are the wood blocker and the XZ41. Okay, I'm just kidding of course. The wood blocker is a sniper rifle that honestly felt more like a dial sniper rifle from back in Borderlands 2, but it is from Hyperion that shoots in I believe 4 shot bursts and I didn't like burst firing sniper rifles back then and I still don't like them. The red text on it is something I cannot find anything about it on the internet but this might just be a good thing. If any one of you watching know what it is, again I would appreciate it if you use your dirty mind and type a comment down below for everybody to see how dirty you are. Thanks. The sniper rifle can, I believe, come with any element and from any lootable source in the game and yeah, if you like burst firing sniper rifles this might be for you but there are a lot better options out there that most of you are probably going to opt for the Layuda instead anyway so who cares, right? <laughs> The last weapon on this list perfectly shows off what an idiot I am because the hyper focus is a part of the name and should therefore be included in another part but I just name it XZ41 and you shut up already. The XZ41 has a red text that is probably our first quote from the Lord of the Rings where Denethor says my line has ended. Gearbox probably chose this text because every time you hit an enemy with this weapons projectile it will create two more projectiles that will move to the left and right in a straight line from where you hit the initial bullet on an enemy. Kinda bad explanation, but just watch the gameplay. The gun is nothing too special and you barely hit someone with the ricocheting mechanic, but I found that it does decent damage and was quite fun to use for landing consecutive critical hits due to the accuracy boost Hyperion weapons receive after time. It can also have any element and drops from any lootable source in the game. And that is it! My fellow 217 subscribers and those that watch my videos that will probably not watch until this point, but if you did, please leave a like for my heart hard hard work sitting in front of my computer, editing, researching, playing, thumbnailing, uploading these videos for the whole Borderlands 3 community. Leave a sub if you want more for my exceptional work in the future and thank everybody for watching. I love you guys and I see you in my next video. <laughs>